If you are anything like me, then you are one of those people that dreamed about being a mom and had all these grand expectations of what it was going to be and how you were going to love it so much. And then it comes and you're like, oh my goodness, I am not sleeping, I am a cow, I am drained beyond all belief, and I don't know what to do with this crying child. And then we're like, but once this phase is over, we're going to get to the next and it's going to be okay, right? And then we hit the terrible twos and we're like, wait, hold on, this is hard too. And I think that a lot of us moms feel like we can't talk about how we are feeling unsatisfied or unhappy or unfulfilled in the role of motherhood. But I think it kind of leaves some of us also feeling like if we talk about how we are having a hard time with some of the struggles that we are dealing with then we're just simply ungrateful for our children and then we kind of feel bad about it so we try to keep it hush hush but this is something that needs to be talked about on a wider scale so that we can continue to grow together as women and as moms that support one another and because of the line of work that I am and meeting with my clients and then also struggling with some of these things myself I decided I really want to understand Understand this a little bit more so that I could figure out what we can actually do about it. So when I sat down and I finally got to get to some of this research and what I was looking for, these are some of the things that I actually found. Everyone's situation is different, everyone's journey is different, and there can be a variety of different things that are going to affect you and why you might be feeling negative about your role and being a mom. However, I think a lot of them really still come down to the same themes. So we're going to dissect a little bit about what they are and what we can do about it to help implement some change that's going to be effective and helping us work through some of this. So the four areas that I have in and what adds to the struggles that we may be facing and feeling unfulfilled and unhappy Number one is insisting on the perfection, and I also find it with comparison. We as women in today's society are bombarded by images of unrealistic expectations of what womanhood and motherhood should look like and feel. I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I will sit there and scroll through things and I see how these women are overachievers and they have all of these things that they just have systematically in place and they are just thriving. And I look at it and I think, man, I must be doing a pretty crappy job and I must not be a great mom because I cannot live up to those standards. We constantly have someone around us that we can compare ourselves to. And then when we see that we are lacking in something or we need to create some kind of system around it, we type it into Google, right? We look for answers and, and part of this actually becomes the problem because we have access to so much knowledge and information. And so as we're looking for something to help fix that area that we might be struggling with within ourselves, like laundry, well, when this happens, we try to find something that's going to help us and we compare ourselves to the women that have the magical key that's going to fix all of our issues. We have all of these outside influences and we are up against a multi-billion dollar industry of um, what is advertised to us and what we need and what we should consume, but then also the world of social media that is constant in our lives. and does play a big role in this because the comparison does nothing other than to have us look at something else or someone else and covet exactly what they have and trying to recreate it in our own lives. And the comparison then plays into per the perfectionism that we think we need to obtain, but we can't. So it constantly leaves us at a place of feeling unworthy and unfulfilled and just dissatisfied with who we are and how we function as a mom. Then we trick ourselves into believing the lie that we should be more like them, those moms that have it all together. And this goes right into toxic self-blame. And I also like to call it guilt because to be honest with most of the people and the women that I work with, it really comes out of being driven by guilt. We come down on ourselves so hard and we blame our ourselves for those failures and we can get into our heads about it. Before you know it, because our guilt has settled in and has found a space to stay in our lives, we start to compromise. We compromise ourselves and we compromise the way in which we raise our children and even sometimes our marriages because we don't like to feel uncomfortable. So feeling that guilt or that shame and those toxic thoughts that start to spin 
becomes something that starts to run away with our thoughts. Let me know if this sounds familiar to you. I work two days a week, then I have to run some errands and do some grocery shopping, so we're busy, right? And then it comes to the point where my kids are just, you know, along for the ride and not necessarily getting all of that intentional time that I feel like they should get and that they deserve because I love them. And they start to feel the effects of it. And then, you know, maybe some acting out happens. And if you've got multiple kids, you know that they will fight. <laughs> Before you know it, someone scratched, someone's got an eye poked out, someone was bit, whatever the case may be. And then you hear the curdling scream of, of terror that takes place and you immediately respond. And what happens is we feel guilty about if we had been more present or giving them the time that they deserved and needed, then this behavior wouldn't be taking place. And so we're going to give them another chance to choose the right thing because it is our fault because we are not doing enough for them. Well, some of that might actually be true and we need to evaluate ourselves. But on the other hand, we end up making excuses for them and we make excuses for ourselves and we overcompensate because of the guilt that we feel and we allow things that we thought we would never allow because we don't wanna feel that way. So instead of just addressing the issue and disciplining for the action, we sit there and we blame ourselves and we give them some wiggle room to almost get themselves out of it. And then there becomes the issue of, my goodness, this child is just running me raw and I do not know what to do with them. We start to become emotionally drained. Now, it's not always because of negative behaviors, but I think that you can get the idea in what I am saying is the toxic self-blame and the guilt that we feel in order to relieve it, we will compromise ourselves and our children and our way that we parent at times. One of the ways that we compromise is not necessarily knowing exactly what is going on with us and getting the help that we need, which leads me into we suppress our emotions until we get to the point of running away and checking out. Come on. We've all had those days where you are just exhausted and feeling beat down and your spouse comes home and you are like, here, take this child from me. I need to go have a break. And well, that is all good and we definitely need to take them. But why are we getting to that point so often? And I think some of it comes down to not being aware of what was going on with us and suppressing our feelings and not allowing ourselves to have these check-ins with knowing when we are being overstimulated or when we have too many things that are on our schedule and we just need to cut some things out. We are a pain and discomfort avoidant culture because so many of us have been taught to numb, minimize, and deny uncomfortable emotions instead of seeing them as a natural healthy part of being human. We tend to think we're weak when we feel the many big emotions that motherhood brings up in us. We're meant to feel deeply. We simply need more space within which to be honored and respected while we feel what we feel. I think it's so true. Like we run away from discomfort and because of that and how we suppress things, we're not doing what we need and understanding our very own needs and feeling respected and honored as moms and in the roles that we play in the constant pouring out. We are biologically wired to care deeply for those who are around us such as our children. But because of all of the roles that we play and all the pressures that are around us, and oftentimes we feel like we just don't have the time or the energy or are even deserving of getting the help that we need or asking for help. I am always going to say like going and seeing a counselor is a great and wonderful thing, especially when you are struggling with some of these big things that we have going on. Sometimes it's a layers deep of things that we have been through and we need to be able to address them and work through them so that we are not being re-traumatized and being triggered throughout the day with our children and then responding from that. There are many reasons why I think counseling is beneficial. I myself am in counseling and I probably will be for a long time. But we think, oh, you know, I just need to figure it out. It does not matter. Or I don't have the time for it. I don't have the energy to do it. Or, I don't have the finances for it. There's a variety of reasons and why we think we just cannot take on that one more thing. And while I think that getting the help that we need is crucially important, I also think that there is a step most of us can take some of the time 
from all of these things that we are feeling and the pressures that we are under and getting help but I think how often we miss a step in between because all of these areas can trickle down into, I think, one that most women struggle with. And this is loneliness. We have been fed unhealthy messages about independence and what independence should look like. Our culture celebrates the reward of independence rather than interdependence, which has led most of us to believe that we're asking for help or relying on a friend or letting people into our space is just not acceptable and actually makes us seem weak, which then rolls back into the toxic self-blame and guilt. Anyway, we're gonna keep moving forward. We are wired to strive in deep personal relationships. So because we're wired this way, it's something that we are naturally going to seek out and try to find, right? So we use what we have and oftentimes it is that great thing in our pocket that we can pull out where we can feel instantly connected. Instead of connecting with someone, we are just viewing people and seeing them and what they are doing versus having interaction with them. Years ago, like people would do things in community. You lived in community. You shared meals, you shared chores, you would help one another with your children. And as time has gone on, we have separated further and further where we have to try to create the community and yes yes my friend it takes work and yes it can even be very uncomfortable but we need it because of our wiring and because of the things that we might be feeling and not necessarily addressing that makes the aspect of community even more important no i am not saying but just because we need to have this in our lives that we should go and enjoy those community living environments that are popping up all over europe even though i feel like there are some great benefits to it i'm sure many of you can look back on your college years and think about the environment that you lived in and the community that was there just simply living life together. But then we step into these roles of, you know, marriage and being a, a mom and it all shifts and changes. Because everyone is so busy with what they have going on in their lives that you have to be intentional in creating this. So no, you don't need to go join this community of living, but I think there are some things that we can pull from it and apply to our lives. And then I'm going to tell you how we can actually make this start to happen in our relationships. So here are just a few of the benefits that I have found and also experience in community. Number one is support and safety. You feel like you have people around you and that are in your corner that you are doing life with. There comes an element of safety that takes place because not everything is necessarily on you. There is a community to share the responsibilities of life with and it causes us to have the benefit of feeling safe within that environment most of the time. I mean there's always going to be those few people that just are not safe in your life and you will have have to cut out and you will have to create boundaries and you will have to do what you need to in order to not necessarily have them a part of your community but you know that's a whole nother topic the second one is the idea of belonging you belong there you have things that you offer and you are a part of a system that is not just about you like we are made for you know there's the body of christ like we cannot all be the same body part not everyone can be the head not everyone can be the pinky there is a different role for everyone and when you find where your role is and what body part that it is yours to play out then you feel like you belong within that position. The next one is influence. Show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Well, there is some truth to that because we are influenced by the people we surround ourselves with. You will help teach them things. They will help teach you things. Maybe they have a great idea and they can run with meals and food and you have great ideas when it comes to parenting. And when you collide and you collaborate, then that is where effectiveness takes place in the relationships that you establish. The next one is sharing. Sharing is caring, right? So 
we're gonna tell our kids this, then we need to also be living by it and not just, you know, say it or do as I say and not actually be living in it and give it living by example for our kids. So we live in a consumer society where we feel like we need to consume, consume, or we need this one thing or we need that one thing. Well, when you have a community around you, you can rely on one another for the things that you might need. We need to learn how to share <laughs> and we need to also learn how to receive the sharing and put our pride aside and say, yeah, I don't have this or I don't know what to do. Can you teach me? Can I learn? Can you help me? And grow in that. We don't need all of these things all of the time. One of the most special time with community and friendships is, you know, when I was breastfeeding my first and just feeling like a cow and changing diapers and crying all the time and just struggling in the area of being a new mom and I had a friend that I would call and just say can I come sit on your couch and breastfeed my baby and just hang out and you know sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't but when I was able to do that you know we weren't you know solving any world problems or really getting anything done we were just sitting there in each other's presence and being with one another and then it would often lead into sharing of meals and hey i have this you have that like let's combine and do a meal together being able to share our food and our resources with each other to help one another thrive in the roles that we have which leads me into learning you learn new things you are inspired by them and we learn a lot about ourselves i say that you know being a mom is like a holding up a mirror and you see the beauty and also the flaws your children reflect them back to you but living in community and having a base also does the same thing but those adults are often a little bit better at being able to put words to the things that might be going on and helping us through it and giving us new ideas or strategies and bouncing things off of one another. And this goes into the very last one, which is acceptance. When we can learn what acceptance looks like in relationships, it helps us understand what acceptance looks like in our relationship with Christ. He created us for a purpose and a reason and he has plans for us but when we are tossing in the wind and we don't have things that are grounding us or that are pointing us back to him we don't feel like we belong and it's hard to sometimes accept that we belong to him if we don't see it in relationships around us now i'm not saying that if we don't have relationships around us, then we will never understand what acceptance from God looks like. Like that is not where I'm going with this. But where I am going with this, God uses his people to also speak to us and to work in our lives. And if we are isolating ourselves or living in isolation, then we will never be able to experience God working through other people in our relationship with him. And when we can do that and we feel accepted into the community, then it helps translate that idea of being accepted by Christ with no strings attached, not because of the things that you have achieved or the things that you can do or the things that you have given to him or any of that, just simply because he created you and he loves you. And that's all it takes is being able to say, you're right, God, like I need you. And that is part of this idea of community is understanding where your value and your worth comes from and what your identity is in relationship to Christ. Because who is going to know us better than the one who created us? And when we can start to see him active in our lives through other people, it helps us build experiences that help build our faith, that help us build our relationship with Christ, not because of what we do, but just simply because of what we can receive and what we say and offering him, which is our hearts. And that is the only thing that we have to offer him and community and the right community helps point us in that direction and getting us to the place of being able to flourish in that and understanding what grace love and mercy looks like in a practical relationship that is face to face okay so now that we have gone through all of this i feel like it was a lot so we understand why we are struggling with all these things, but what does that mean? And what do we actually do with it? Because I'm still at home feeling unhappy, unfulfilled, and lonely. Well, 
you're going to go and you're going to try something different this week. You are going to actually try to find a community and you are going to put yourself in uncomfortable situations. You are going to try this, right? Right. You're gonna try it. I know you're gonna try it. So you are going to start finding your tribe. And if you already have a tribe and you're still experiencing these things, then hold on because we're gonna get there. But start with building a tribe. And okay, cool, how do I do that? When I try to have these play dates with moms, it just doesn't work because I'm running around at the park chasing my kid and not actually having a conversation. Yes, you are absolutely right. That is exactly how play dates go. So we gotta work with it. We are going to go and invest in one relationship this week. Just one person that you can reach out to. And instead of scrolling on Facebook and mindlessly numbing yourself or comparing yourself to other people around you, you are going to pick up your phone and FaceTime someone for maybe just even five minutes. And then you're gonna be interrupted and you're gonna have to hang up. But then it's okay because you can call them back. You're going to find that one person that you think that you can actually foster a relationship with. Now, if it doesn't work out or they reject you and it goes terribly and it's just not viable, and it's okay because there's a lot of people out there there's a lot of other people that are also feeling the same way that you are so if you're like I don't have anyone to call I don't know what to do well go to your local church and see if they have any mom group and actually sign up to it and then actually go to it and sit at the table and maybe meet someone maybe someone that you might not have necessarily picked out to be your friend right because that just seems to be the way it goes when we go to these things we're like sitting next to that person we're like no 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 but I'm just saying, don't shut it down just yet. Just try it out for a bit and see where it might take you. So you actually need to put in the work. And I know I was talking about like always having to do, 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 and like all of these different things and we don't have the energy and we're tired and all this stuff, but like, do you really want to see effective change in your life? Because we can come into this knowledge and understanding, great, because we do that as a society, we're constantly being bombarded with information, but unless if we're actually going to do something with that information, then what good is that information? It's not. So we actually have to learn how to put something into practice. And that is also with you being aware of what is going to take too much from you and some other things that you might need to cut out in order to make this happen for the energy levels that you need for it or also even the time. Now, if you feel like I have a community but I am still struggling with all of these things, Okay, fair, but I'm gonna challenge you in this. Are you actually being a participant in the community that you have? And what I mean by this is, are you being vulnerable and actually opening yourself up into the benefits that community has for you and what you can learn in these relationships? Vulnerability fosters vulnerability, but vulnerability is also very scary and is draining. And we don't have energy, remember? Yes, I remember. But oftentimes we will sit there and we will say like, oh, I have all of these friends and all this stuff, but like we don't actually have genuine true connections. But in order to have a friend, you also need to be a friend. And come on, we're all exhausted from all of this fake crap out there and these fake relationships and all of these things that we just need to achieve and do versus just simply being. And so just learning how to be in those relationships. Now, I am the person that struggles with needing people. I am the person that struggles with asking for help. Maybe it's my pride. Maybe it's unresolved trauma. I don't know, maybe it's both. But I know that there's a lot of us out there like this, but that cannot stop us. We need those connections and that deepness and people that are going to encourage us in our walk with Christ so that we can actually find fulfillment in our identity and who we were created to be and the roles that we have been given. This, my friend, is life-changing. 